recording this in May of 2020. We are still living through an unprecedented global pandemic. Unless that changed in the last few hours. Let me check. Uh, yeah, that's still happening. Well, so yes, we are still living through the most boring imaginable apocalypse. And I think we all agree it sucks. But personally speaking, as an observer of music, it's also extremely interesting because we get to see it change in front of us. Now, movies, TV, those take a little while to catch up, but music can react right away. Like, I remember this happening after 9-11 when Enrique Iglesias' hero suddenly vaulted up the charts. Yeah, it was real weird to watch this open shirt, bedroom eyes ballad suddenly become the most important song in the world, but... You know, shit was different all of a sudden. The context changed the meaning of the song. And that is definitely happening now, too. I have had nothing better to do than to listen to the entire Hot 100 front to back every week, and I've noticed some songs seem particularly suited to this moment in time. Would you be my little quarantine? There are, of course, the songs that are explicitly pandemic related. 21 Pilots were the first to write a reference to it. Since then, Luke Combs, Lil Baby, One Republic, and enemy of this show, Mike Love, have all cut records specifically about the quarantine. Let's get back to having fun, fun, fun in the sun. God, you suck. But I'm more attracted to the songs that are unintentionally about it. There's a song that hit radio called If the World Was Ending. But if the world was ending, you'd come over right. Not hard to see why that's taking off. There's also Fiona Apple's immediate critical smash, Fetch the Bolt Cutters. Fetch the Bolt Cutters. I've been in here too long. Yeah, that's a pretty relatable sentiment right now. And similarly, Thomas Rhett's Beer Can't Fix has taken on some added dimensions. Ain't nothing that a beer can fix. You said it, bro. Now I'm in the bathtub crying. My personal favorite is Benet's Super Lonely, which sings about isolation and sadness in a tone just ironic enough to be comforting. Speaking of not having the energy to move, there's also Pau Fu's depression rap Deathbed. Now, those last two are interesting to me because they got popular on TikTok, the newest tastemaker in popular music. TikTok has proven to be an extremely powerful promotional tool. It is breaking all the rules in which songs get popular. Ever since the insanity of Old Town Road last year, executives have been searching high and low for the next Lil Nas X, some newcomer who comes out of nowhere on this new medium where they can bypass all the gatekeepers and catch the world by storm. And at last, they seem to have found him. So, let's check out this fresh-faced new sensation who's changing the face of the industry. Black leather glove, no sequence. Buckles on the jacket, it's elite shit. Fucking Drake. Fucking Drake again. Last month, Drake scored yet another number one hit with Tusi Slide, the lead single off of his newest double length extended mixtape EP LP playlist record B side collection album. Who could possibly care about another goddamn Drake project at this point? I'm sorry, it's just who's crying out for more Drake right now? The 2010s were already the Drake decade, and if you hoped it would be restricted to just the one, sorry. The new single broke records by being his 209th charting song, which makes him officially the title holder for most Hot 100 entries of all time. And boy, weren't all of them just so good. They're so big, I call them Williams for real. You know, in a sense, Drake's continued success is good for critics like me. It's a lot easier to write about an artist who's been around a while. You get to see how they've changed and grown, how their new music affects their image. But, like, come on. I feel like a complete idiot saying that about Drake. Well, let's check out this new song. Oh, wow. Yet another dreary, drowsy, drab-ass Drake song. You haven't put out one of those in four hours. Changed and grown. What are we even talking about? Someone gonna tell me that the seasoned veteran who made 2019's Money in the Grave has noticeably matured from the young upstart who made 2011's Headlines? Even the beats he uses hasn't changed that much. And yes, obviously, I've said a lot of positive things about Drake in the past. I do like a lot of his songs. I've liked at least something from every one of his releases. But at this point, that's a function of quantity, not quality. 
Yes, somewhere in his latest five-hour collection of half-finished raps, there's probably at least one good song in there, just statistically speaking. But I've kind of resigned myself to Drake continuing to have his way with the Hot 100. After the inexplicable popularity of the already forgotten God's Plan, anything is possible. The man has the formula to get hits. It's just, I don't know if he's ever deployed it so cynically. Kiki, do you love me? In 2018, having already spawned a catchphrase and an internet meme, Drake got the viral trifecta by starting a dance craze. And this was pretty important for Drake because he'd just hit a real bumpy point in his career. And then that dance popped up spontaneously and smoothed everything right out. So Drake must have been like, hey, why don't we do that again on purpose this time? The new dance is called the Tootsie Slide, named after its choreographer. Shockingly, Drake did not choreograph it himself. And boy, doesn't it make you want to get up and dance. Don't you want to dance with me? No. No, that's right, no. You know, I've, I've talked a lot of shit about the dance craze of the past decade or so. I've, I've actually been coming around on that for a while. At the very least, Soldier Boy and Salento had that brash, youthful energy, as opposed to Drake, who at age 33 already sounds ready for retirement. Left foot up, right foot slide. What if the cha-cha slide had a bad hangover? That's the Tusi slide. Can't describe the pressure I be putting on myself, yeah. Now, under normal circumstances, I would call this a comically terrible song. And I'm not even saying it isn't, but as we live through quarantine mania, the sensation that's sweeping the nation, I gotta say, this is the song of the lockdown. Not any of those other songs I mentioned. Tusi Slide. Tusi Slide captures this moment so perfectly that when my kids ask me what the quarantine was like, I'm gonna do the Tusi Slide at them instead of answering. And it's not just the fact that it came out during the quarantine and Drake has to do the dance alone in his house. No, let me explain. You see, one of the new surefire ways to promote a song is to come up with a stupid dance and pay some social media influencer to do it that everyone copies on TikTok. I don't really get it, but apparently that's how it works. Now, there are some celebrities following the meme. Here we see Sir Anthony Hopkins in a deleted scene from The Remains of the Day. Maybe he needed some of that Drake promo money to buy himself a new castle, or maybe he's just as bored as the rest of us. I mean, Drake's probably big enough that he doesn't really need to buy promotion. This was going viral regardless. But the thing is, TikTok dances are supposed to be a way to promote the song. With Tusi Slide, the TikTok dance is the song. It's the whole point of the song. Now, that makes me uncomfortable. In the same way that all those classic rock guys felt in the 80s when music videos became bigger than their own music. It feels like Drake hacked the system. You can't even call it astroturfing because he's not even trying to hide what he's doing. He hired a goddamn choreographer. For fuck's sake, he named the song after him. He wants you to know. I'm surprised he didn't just call his dance The Trend Chaser. Show you how to do it, it goes find that trend, chase that trend. But that's beside the point. Drake has done something really brilliant here. By releasing a song specifically tailored for TikTok, Drake has made the perfect song for a time when everyone's stuck in their houses. Like, you listen to that Dua Lipa record that just came out, it sounds like a dance club. It is meant to be experienced with a large group of people. I really like that song, but what does a disco song mean right now in a world with no discos? Or what is arena rock, for that matter, if there are no arenas? So many genres may as well be science fiction right now. But Tusi Slide, meanwhile, Tusi Slide is a dance song where you don't need a dance floor. You don't need people. You don't even need the entire song. You just need a camera, 20 seconds of free time, and three feet of space. And not only is it intended to be enjoyed from the privacy of your own smartphone, but also, even if you could go out and dance to it, you wouldn't. This moody, funkless instrumental only makes sense as a dance beat during this depressing ass moment in history. Imagine if the world were normal and you'd be at a, a wedding reception or a prom and the DJ threw this on. All right, everybody, I wanna see everyone on the floor for this one, make some noise. Yeah, I know, if kids were having proms, kids would be dancing to it because Drake is just that powerful, but I can't tell you I understand why. I don't get how this song doesn't just like physically evaporate the second the quarantine is over. Like what possible use could this sleepy track have outside of TikTok? 
It's too sad to listen to with people, and if you are sad, Drake telling you to lift your leg is probably not going to be much comfort. You can't even listen to him to admire Drake's lyrical skills because he turns in the most half-assed set of lyrics in his entire career. Don't you wanna dance with me? No, I could dance like Michael Jackson. I could get you the passion. It's a thriller in a trap. Where we from? Great rhymes, bro. Also, uh, I noticed that we're just we're we're just gonna keep referencing Michael Jackson. I could dance like Michael Jackson. Just gonna keep positively comparing ourselves to the king of pop. May he... Uh, well, we're not gonna go there. And we're never going there. Look, people are still arguing about that. I don't want to be in the middle of it, so I'm just not gonna take any sides on that one way or the other. Maybe Michael Jackson was a pedophile. Or maybe he was just an innocent, wrongfully accused man who for some reason chose to look and act his entire adult life like a pedophile. Who's to say? There, that shouldn't make anyone angry. Regardless of where you stand on that, it's been apparent for a while now that MJ's musical legacy is too toweringly important to be undone. We could find out Michael Jackson was a coronavirus himself and he'd still keep getting shoutouts and rap songs. So just taking that as a given, how dare you, Drake? How dare you? I could dance like Michael Jackson. No, you can't. You cannot. Michael Jackson was one of the greatest dancers who ever lived. Michael Jackson did things no one else can do. If your grandpa can do it, it's not like Michael Jackson. I mean, listen to the actual steps of the dance. It's very simple. They go right foot up, left foot slide, left foot up, right foot slide. Basically, I'm saying either way we about to slide. Hey, can't let this one slide. You ever, like, read a sentence that's so impossibly badly written that you can't stop thinking about it? Basically, I'm saying either way we about to slide. Hey, can't let this one slide. Either... Huh? Okay, I thought I had to do both slides, like left and then right, but apparently I can do either? I, I can pick? Basically I'm saying either way we about to slide. I, I don't I don't get what that line's supposed to be saying. Is it is it like a joke? Either way, we're sliding. What? If it's a joke, he still sounds like he's about to fall asleep crying, so it doesn't land. Oh, and the English teacher in me is basically just screaming at that basically. No, delete that. Also, can't let this slide. You do know that means you can't tolerate it, right? Can't let this one slide. Basically, you're saying that either the lyrics or the dance are so bad that it shouldn't go unpunished. And personally, I agree. You know, basically. Really, I just can't afford to lose nobody else. Yeah. Like, the entire thing is just slapdash. Drake is infamous for making flat, monotonous songs. You know, it's his thing. But even for him, he's really putting in the effort here to not put in any effort. But that just makes it more brilliant, right? Would it have fit the zeitgeist if Drake had tried even a little? Who's got the energy for a real dance song right now? I barely have the energy to write a real ending to this video. Allegedly he started writing this before the pandemic, but I wouldn't be surprised if he tailored this specifically for the lockdown. I wouldn't be surprised if he started the pandemic himself to fit the song. And even if it is just a lucky accident, it is pure evil genius all the same. No song that was actually about the pandemic could capture its true feeling of sadness, loneliness, and total, complete, brainless, inane boredom. In fact, there's only one song that even comes close. And that is, of course, the celebrity cover of Imagine. You want to make the ultimate pandemic song? Mash up the two of them together. Now I'm just making myself sad. Yeah, I'm gonna right foot up, left foot slide out of here. 